Students are working with the sound of Jude every morning to prepare for Fajr prayers. Fajr Salat is at 5 a.m. After Fajr, students prepare for the day's activities. The morning assembly serves as a meeting point for all students to prepare for classes. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون إخوة فأصلحوا بين أخويكم فَأَسْلِهُ بَيْنَ أَخَوَيْكُمْ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ لَأَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Let us pray please. The assembly ends with a silent prayer and students disperse to their various classrooms. Amen. Assalamu alaikum, Mubi sir. Wa alaikum, Assalamu alaikum, Mubi sir. You have a very beautiful campus and um, the environment is very serene. But why so many flags of different countries? Uh, we yeah. have, uh, mm. lo I mean, many flags from different countries. Mm. Because by the grace of Allah, this missionary training college, which is known now as Jamiatul Mubasharin, mm. we have here students from 17 countries. And oh. these flags are representing the countries from where these students have come. Oh. So let's talk about the language constraints. For instance, yeah. someone from East Africa does not speak Urdu. Yeah. Someone from uh, 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 Burkina Faso speaks French and not English. So what's your mode of teaching? What language do you use to teach them? In our this uh, Jamiatul Mubasharin, the mode of uh, teaching or the mode of language mm. is uh, English. And we um, face these challenges because we have students, uh, even the majority is from Francophone mm. students. Mm. We have from Portuguese countries also. So here when they arrive, for some months we teach them English mm -hmm. and after four months then they start the first year and within four to six months time by the grace of Allah, the, because of the environment, yeah. students are able to learn English and then even by the grace of Allah, our most of students, those who are uh, non-English speaking, mm -hmm. they take even the positions in the classes, first, second, third oh, also. Oh, really? Yes, please. <laughs> well, but later on, I'd like you to explain to me how you came by such beautiful scenery on the compound. What are some of the challenges the school faces? Okay, thank you very much. So, when Hazrat uh, uh, the Jamaat Ahmadiyya Ghana they mm. decided to to yes. transfer it from mm. Salpung to yes. here, and this uh, then this challenge was thrown to the local community mm. to provide us the land here. Mm. Then our Ahmadis, the native of Akrofu, yes. they donated this piece of land. Mm. 
which was i mean 120 acres of land Whoa. was do, do, uh, donated by our ahmadis mm. and, and this building so. was uh, um, built by in the name of Allah, most gracious, ever mess for this plague was unveiled by Hazrat Mirza Masrur Ahmed, Khalifa to Masi, the fifth, on 14th March 2004. Yes, please. So it's possible I might be standing at a spot where Huzu himself stood to unveil this plague. Yes, I am eyewitness uh, mm. for that because uh, yeah. I'm lucky enough that uh, uh, I received Hazrat Amir al yeah. twice in this college in 2004 mm. and in 2008. Yes. Now I will take you in my office mm. so that uh, you see it's some of my uh, things we are, what we are doing yes. here also yes. so that uh, you can get more information about okay. our this Jamiatul Mubashir. Yes. So in my here I think uh, I, you can see here I, as I mentioned you mm. that in 1966 yes. this college was established. Mm. These yeah. are the principals, These are the principals who, are, who are able to serve here yeah. on various times. Mm. Our Amir Sahib Ali Abdul Haab Adam Sahib also, he served as a principal here. Mm -hmm. Our Naim Amir Wan also, he served as a principal also. We try to keep them busy all the time. We prepared a timetable which is based on 24 hours. Our daily activity starts from 4 a.m. Mm. with uh, when they start awakening with the Drushri, with uh, invoking blessings on Holy Prophet Sallallahu which is known as Salli Allah mm -hmm. Then they perform Tahajjud individually. We go for Fajr prayer, then come to the classes. And after classes, they have uh, siesta, then sporting activities between Asr and Maghrib. Mm -hmm. After Maghrib, they do watch some news, NMT, etc. Mm -hmm. After Isha, again, they go for two hours, uh, uh, they prep for their night mm -hmm. studies. So these are the, the their 24 hours activities. These students, they are from different ages, different groups, different languages. Like in Ghana, I think we have 14 languages or more than that. So those students, they have come apart from their national language. Then again, they are divided into tribes. So when they come from different races, different cultures, different societies. But because of the, the prayers and the the instructions and the teachings of the the other Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and Hazrat Amir Mu'minin's directive, we never face this kind of problem here. Mm. The racism or hatred with uh, with other police or other countries. The students they stay here as a, like a one community, as a one family. From its humble beginnings, the Ahmadiyya Muslim Missionary Training College in Ghana has grown from strength to strength. With an initial student population of 13, the school's population now stands at 126. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Aga. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, can I interrupt your class for a few minutes, please? I I just want to learn more about the school, the students, and the teachers as well. You're welcome. Thank you very much. So, you are a teacher here? Yes, I am. What, what do you teach? I teach books of the Prophet Messiah and other books of the generals. Mm. And um, so, first of all, let's talk about your students. Yeah. How well do they respond to lessons? I would say that I'm very pleased with the students. They are wonderful children. Mm. As you can see, they are from so many countries mm. with different uh, training background. And yet still, they cope so well with our system here. Yes. And uh, I believe, as I see them all the time, I interact with them. They enjoy what they see. So your mode of instruction, the language of instruction is English. So how, how, how quickly do the non-speaking students adjust to the English language? And that's the most wonderful thing about Jamia here. Mm -hmm. Because uh, when the foreigners, indeed those from Francophone countries, when they come, we have uh, specialists who take them through basic English uh, training. Mm -hmm. And in three months, they are able to cope with the medium of instruction. Mm. And this uh, is very, very useful. And this, normally you don't see it in so many places, mm -hmm. but it is our peculiarity. And so when students pass out, uh, how easily do they integrate into the wider society? So their preaching, the standard of their preaching. 
I base in the school here. Mm. I produce them yes. and they go out into the field. Mm. But from what we hear, our students are doing very, very well. This college has been there since 1966. And it has produced students for Ghana, for Nigeria, and presently so many other African countries. Even of late, we had a student from as far as the Pacific uh, Islands, mm -hmm. Fiji, who wow. passed through here. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we hear about all these students is that their delivery has been very, very good. The teachers, what kind of qualifications do they have? What kind of quality do they, do they give to these uh, students here? Well, I wouldn't doubt the masters at all. Mm. These are qualified uh, people from Jamia Ahmadiyya in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. They are all shahideen, meaning that they have all gone through a seven-year course of missionary training yes. in Pakistan. Mm. And they all have shahid degree. Mm. And most of them are also mutakhasisin, meaning they are specialized yes. in their areas. Okay. And they are teaching here. Mm. So they have quality knowledge mm. to impart to the students. Thank you very much, Mobisa. I'm really grateful for your time. Thank you very much, fellow students. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Hifis School has been established in a separate building in the college to train people to memorize the Holy Quran. We started Madrasa Ghana, 1st March 2005. By the grace of Allah, we have completed 25 students, those who completed the whole memorization of Holy Quran from here. 22, they are from Ghana two from Burkina Faso and one from is from Uganda. Every day, students, they memorize new lessons, seven lessons, and manzil. Those who memorize 15 parts, they read every day, half part as a revision to his teacher. And those who are above 15 parts, they read one part every day to his teacher as a revision. Every year before Ramadan, they go to different jamaats of Ghana to lead Tarabi prayers. And during this period, they lead Holy Quran and teach Islamic teachings to other people. Because of these students, more parents, they are interested that their children, they should come and memorize Holy Quran. In keeping abreast with technology, the school has established for itself a computer laboratory where students are taught ICT. Assalamu alaikum. alaikum. How are you doing? Oh, I'm also fine. My name is Abdul Hai. Um, your name is? My name is Diko Ahmad Ibrahim. Uh, Ibrahim? Yeah. Oh, where are you from? I'm from Burkina Faso. Bur oh, Burkina Faso. Yeah. So you speak French? Yeah. Comment ça va? And you are? Uh, Abdurrahman Nassim from Benin. From Benin? Yeah. Oh, you, you speak French as well? Yeah. A French-speaking country? Yeah. Comment ça va? Ça va très bien. Moi aussi. And you? I'm Juma Ahmad from Congo. Yes. From, well, how do you learn how to do that? You do that in Congo? <laughs> I learned it in Ghana. You learned it in Ghana? Yeah, it's a Ghanaian thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, my brother, how are you? I'm Zali Saidi Mohammed from Ivory Coast. From Ivory Coast? Yes. Don't worry, you lost the African Cup of Nations. But next time, but you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't do that. <laughs> Brother, you are... I'm a Ghanaian. I'm from... I'm a, my name is Sheru Bin Jaffa. Oh, really? You see, I speak French. Ah. Just a bit. Comment est-ce qu'on dit missionary en français? Missionnaire. Missionnaire? Missionnaire. Okay. Um, so, you are from Burkina Faso. Burkina Faso yes. Why did you leave Burkina Faso all the way, travel to uh, Ghana, to, to, to study, to become a missionary? Uh, you see, I understood uh, that uh, as uh, it is said in the Holy Quran, God said, That I, God, have not created jinn and human beings except for the purpose of worshipping Him. That the, the real purpose of uh, the creation of human beings, as God is the creator, 
he he chose uh, the purpose for human beings and then this purpose is to uh, this is to establish relationship between god and then human beings so i understood it uh, that uh, being a president or being having had great wealth or uh, ruling great uh, kingdoms all this thing is worldly things but the real objective is to get uh, the relationship with god to establish relationship with god and i understood it that this thing it is uh, uh, through this uh, becoming missionary you can establish this relationship with mm -hmm. god that's why i choose uh, to come Ghana here and then learn more about islam islam ahmadiyat so that i can reform myself first and after that i may to go and then try to help others my brothers mm. Uh, mm. interesting let me speak to you my brother from uh, yes. benin yes. Uh, why did you leave benin to come to ghana uh, i can say all of us here who are in this college learning it is we have the same uh, almost the same purpose mm -hmm. uh, to learn about the religion and then go go back and try to change others or to bring them uh, to the right path as the whole quran says walta kuminkum ummatun yaduuna ila al-khair so if we, we don't devote our life to learn and then go and preach, who are those who are going to do it? So, and uh, everyone has his own, how to say, job or tax that he's going to do in this world. So for me, what I have chosen is to learn about the religion so that I can try my best to lead people to the right path. Uh, I know that Congo is several kilometers away from Ghana. You crossed several borders to get here. Why, why did you take that journey just to be here to study missionary uh, at the missionary college? Uh, the only purpose that brought me to Ghana is first, I can say I was born to serve Ahmadiyyad and Islam. Mm. Why I say this? Because in 1987, when the fourth Khalifa of the Ahmadiyya Jamaat mm -hmm. made a, a scheme that was called work now that was to dedicate children in the way of Allah that when they are growing since from their childhood they are being brought up in religious environment that when they are reaching the age of their maturity and they are ready to serve Islam they will be called by the Jamaat and start serving this is one of the purposes and when I grew up I reached the age that I could decide myself. Then I was called by the Jamaat. Mm. If I will still continue with education, that was made by my parents. Because they, ded they dedicated my life. And when I reached the, the age that I could myself decide, I was called and I was asked mm. whether I will still accept to continue with the dedication. And I was ready. And I said, I should go. As also it is said in the Holy Quran that if you want to get triumph in this life and the life to come, you have to believe in God, in His Messenger, and strive in His way with your money and your life. How can we strive? We don't have money. We have to use our life to strive in the way of, uh, of Allah. That is one of the purposes I came, that I should also strive in the way of Allah with my life. That is to come learn islam learn quran learn hadith it is said the best among you is the one who learned the holy quran and teaches it to others I have come to learn the quran learn hadith and general knowledge we, we don't only learn hadith and other other things here and quran but we all also have some other subject mm. well it's religious but it covers other worldly matters too okay. when i go I teach my people in this way I will also be able to strive in the way of Allah with my life. That's why I'm here. Mm. Okay. So let me, let me hear from my brother from Ivory Coast okay. and uh, if you had the opportunity to mm. study in an institution like this in Ivory Coast, would you still have chosen to come to Ghana? Uh, I can say yes. Mm. Uh, the Holy Prophet said 
we should seek knowledge even if we have to go to China. Mm. So, uh, if you leave your country for a purpose, so you have to uh, do more effort because you have left everything for something. But being in your country, you can do well. But if you have gone for one single purpose, you have to do well than in your own country. Mm. So if uh, Jamia was there and here too, I would have chosen the opportunity to come here. Mm. So. Okay, so now I'll turn my attention to my brother from Ghana. Young men like you are now interested in studying to become bankers, studying to become you know, other professionals. Why did you choose to become a missionary? You're studying here. Exactly. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, uh, back at school, mm. secondary school, mm. after completion, actually I read science. Mm. So I had the ambition of uh, uh, pursuing any of the sciences, the, the courses. But uh, along the line, I got into reading most of the uh, books, the Jamaat books, mm. the, the books of the Promised Materialism. Mm. Well. And I got to a point among all the things I read, among the literatures, mm. that the purpose of his coming was to spread the mission, yeah. his mission, that is the Ahmadiyya, mm. the, the true Islam, mm. to the corners of the globe, as it is was saved to him in one of his revelations, mm. which in, in Udu, that I will cause the message to reach all corners of the globe. Mm. Now, this was a revelation to the Prophet mm. So, upon uh, citing this uh, revelation, there, thereupon I had that feeling that, well, if this could actually materialize or be, become practical, mm -hmm. then I had to try and then also be a part of it. And how do I do that? I can only do that when I get enrolled in the missionary training college. Mm. And then so that, of course, I can do it in other ways, not, not only being a missionary, but to do it practically, in, in real terms, that is being a missionary and then uh, so i forgot of my ab ambitions of pursuing the sciences and i got enrolled here in 2010. Mm. Yes. and you know what this conversation has done to me it has made me very humble um, because for young men to have sacrificed several things they could have done in the world out there but to come and train as missionaries so as to give light to the world so as to propagate the message of Ahmadiyyat. I'm impressed. I'm humbled. May Allah bless all of you for the decisions you have taken and may he see you through your training successfully. Thank you very much, my brother from Burkina Faso and you from Congo. I'll be sorry, from Benin. I'll be visiting Benin sometime and um, I'll be learning French from you from Congo and then you as well. And my brother from Ghana, thank you so very much for your time. Enjoy your studies. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this very special edition of Real Talk Africa where we're interacting with over 150 students of the Jamiatul Mubashirin at Ekrofu in the central region, a town which has a very rich and illustrious history on the origins of Ahmadiyat in Ghana. But talking about Jamiatul Mubashirin, it is important to note that it was first established at Salt Pond in 1966 till it was moved up here at Ekrofu in this very conducive environment. On today's program, we are going to discuss a very sensitive issue in Islam, that is sacrifice. And we cannot relegate the essence of sacrifice to the background in Islam. On the panel, we have the class prefect of Jamiatul Mubashirin, Abdul Razak Lamboni, who is a final year student as well. We also have Malvi Omar Farouk, who is a tutor in Islamic literature. We also have Hafiz Jibril Saeed, who is the Naib Amir III. And also we have the principal of this very institution, Molvi Hamidullah Zafar. Now our first question goes to Molvi, who is the principal of this institution. Molvi, could you kindly tell us when the institution of Jamia started in Ghana? Bismillah rahman rahim in 1921, when Hazrat Malvi Abdul Rahim Nayyar Sahib arrived in Ghana, within few weeks after his arrival, thousands of 
Ghanaians entered into Islam Ahmadiyyat because of uh, their, I mean, as they were in thousands of numbers, the Ahmadis who joined the, um, who joined this movement. So there was a bitter need to train the local Ahmadis as uh, missionaries. So with his arrival, I can say he started the training of the native Ghanaians as missionaries. And after him, this work continued through Hazrat Maulana Hakim Fazlur Rahman Sahib, Maulana Nazir Ahmad Mubashir Sahib, and also through the local Maulameen, who also, they were scholars, orthodox scholars in Islam before they accepted Ahmadiyyat. When they accepted Ahmadiyyat, they also started to help the Ahmadiyya Muslim mission to train the local Ghanaian Ahmadis as missionaries also. On 21st March 1966, our this very missionary training college was started in Salt Pond and Maulana Ataullah Kaleem Sahib, the then Amir and missionary in charge, inaugurated this Ahmadiyya Muslim Missionary Training College. And in first batch, there were 13 students. Out of these 13 students, nine were Ghanaians, four were Nigerian, and two from Liberia. So that's how this Ahmadiyya Muslim Missionary Training College was started, and which is known now as, as Jamiatul Mubashirin. Because last year, just last year, Hazrat Amir al Mu'minin Ayyadullah Utala bin Asrahil Aziz has given name as Jamiatul Mubashirin. Um, Hafiz Saab, um, I'll come to you. Um, talking about sacrifice, um, there is no doubt that it constitutes the pivot of Islamic teachings. These wonderful men here have deserted all the worldly pleasures to be here. For the sake of Allah, they have sacrificed their lives for the sake of Islam Ahmadiyya. How do you tell us the essence of sacrifice in relation to the pledge they have undertaken. Uh, the basis of a group of people coming out to sacrifice their lives, to serve the faith, the religion, or to serve mankind, comes from the Holy Quran. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Holy Quran, "Wal taqum min kum ummatun yad'una ila al-khair." There should be a group of people from among you, the community, among the Muslims, who will go out there, invite people to do goodness, and then shun you know, uh, bad deeds. And that is to say, there should be the, uh, these people, the group of people who devote themselves, should be the conscience of the community. They have to educate the people to keep them on the right track always. Now, since all of us cannot do that work, you know, if let's say we are 10 million members of the community, all of us cannot go out there and do this work. So a group of us, at least some of us should volunteer. This is not by force. This is not a recruitment. It is voluntary. So some of us should volunteer, come out, and say that we are going to take on this assignment of educating our people to become the moral conscience of the society. That is the basis of this devotion. Now, what happens is that uh, in every family, there are some people who are inclined to take up this high, you know, this, in, uh, this very great assignment. And sometimes the family come together, said one of our boys should go and devote himself to serve all of us. So you find that in every country, you have a, a group of people who want to come out and serve the cause of Islam. That is how we also in here in Ghana, right from the beginning, as the principal said, we had people who wanted to become missionaries to go out there and educate ourselves so that we have a very good community. What I would like to add also concerning what he said was that uh, uh, it is true that uh, uh, we had some local scholars who were very good. For example, Alati Ishaq, just three miles away here from Ekunfi Ekuti here. He was a great scholar and he teamed up with the, the early missionaries, Mawlana Abdurrahim Saab Nayyar, Fazlur Rahman Hakim Saib, and also Mawlana Nazir Mubashir. And they trained some missionaries down here. In Watu, Malam Yahya, Malam Abdul Salam, 
under, under the supervision of uh, Imam al Saleh, did the same. So we had a group of missionaries before this formal establishment of this missionary training college. So my father too was a missionary. And my father was the vice principal of this institution when it started in Solpun. And he was also trained as a missionary by Mola Nazim Bashir on one hand and Alaj Ishaq of Kunfi Okoti, who was an Arabic scholar. They trained him and he came up and they picked, took him as a missionary. So that is generally uh, what I can say about um, Hafiz Saab um, alluded to the fact that um, these men have dedicated themselves. It wasn't compulsory on their part, but there is a saying that you never know what is in there until you get in. You are a tutor in Islamic literature and you continuously engage with them all the time. Have there been instances where some of them seem to have given up? <laughs> Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ala Muhammad wa barik wa sallim inna ka hamidun majid. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The question is a very crucial one. Because it is talking about someone having his zeal and his wanting to achieve something. Ultimately, coming close to that, that something and wanting not to get that something again. That is why I say it is very crucial. Indeed, there have been instances. These students have greater expectations when they come here. But they come from secular education where we do not have such close um, sort of patronage as we have it here in this college. And more so, the number of subjects that we treat here are so numerous, which seem to overload their minds. And therefore, sometimes you see some of the students feeling so tight that they would want to go back, even though they wish that they become missionaries. Some of them do go back because not everybody that wants to be a missionary will surely become a missionary. It's God that makes a missionary. But some too, through what they come to see, notwithstanding the fact that the workload is so much on them, they still continue and ultimately they become missionaries. I have got a few instances that I can give. Among these students that are sitting here, I have a student called Fusein Muhammad. He's from Northern Region. When he came in the first year, one day he confided with me, he told me his feelings, the load of work, and his inability to continue. But you rightly mentioned the subjects that I take. I came into the class with al -Wasiyet and I spoke. Where I saw him started tearing, he started crying. When I left the class, he came to me outside and said, Molvi, did you think about me before coming to speak? It seemed as if everything was about me. I will continue, inshallah, I will complete Jamia. And he's now in the study here. We have quite a few examples like that. Some have completed. We have Nurdin Yusufa from Nigeria, uh, from Burkina Faso. He also came to me several times like this. I encouraged him. At the last moment, when he told me that he would go away, he rang his brother. And his brother told him that, you have told me that Mulv Umar Farouk is in Jamia, uh, Ahmadiyya. Is he still there? He said, yes. And he said, then be there and you will continue, you will finish. And he is doing very well in the field now. So most of these students, because of the background, what they got as education before coming here is low. And now we have to give them more, and much more than what they were receiving before, which their brains are not ready for. But by the grace of God, through the tuition that we give them, most of them are able to make it and they go as successful. 
Abdul Razak Lamboni is one of the prefects in this institution and the Togolese national. Abdul, um, could you kindly tell us um, what necessitated your conversion to Ahmediyat and um, most importantly your reason for choosing Jamiatul Mubashirin? <clears throat> To talk about my conversion or to be converted in Ahmadiyyat and to choose this uh, way of devotees to come to Jamia was uh, first in the school because I'm fond of reading, reading books. So it's through this uh, reading that I came across Ahmadiyya uh, books. So the first book I, wrote, I read was uh, Kishtinu. That is the Ark of Noah. So when I read, I read it, uh, I, beca I became more conscious about the sacrifice. Meanwhile, I was from an Islamic family, but my parents are not uh, Muslims. But uh, my uncle is a Muslim, so I was brought up from a, the a Muslim family. Uh, it's through these uh, readings that I came to embrace uh, Ahmadiyyat. So when I became Ahmadi, I read more about the Jamaat. So I, I came to be acquainted with the Jamaat literatures and also the sacrifices as far as uh, the Islamic teachings are concerned. So that's brought me here in the Jamia. In fact. Let me ask you a follow-up question. Um, you, it's, it's obvious that you have dedicated yourself to this institution, and, but you have a family as well, and at times you would naturally um, feel like um, joining your family at a, at, at a point in time. But what is the spirit that keeps you on, you know, over here? It is the light of Khilafat, I can say. Because it is the love for Khilafat. Yes, that is a very interesting yes, one. Sir. We will now move to the audience for some of them to share some of the experiences uh, with us. I'm sure most of you have very wonderful experiences to share with us. So who would want to speak first? Right. So please hand over the microphone to him. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. My name is Musa. Actually, uh, I have a short story to narrate to you about my conversion to Ahmadiyya. Uh, I asked, when I was young, I asked my father about why are we Muslims. So he told me that, do you want to be in a house which is having one pillar? So I, asked, I told him no. So he told him that's why we are Muslims, because Islam stands on five pillars. So that is a house which is having five pillars, but Christianity stands on one pillar. So he told him that one time, once Islam, uh, this Christianity will break, the pillar will break and fall, the Christianity will fall on the Christians. So when I came across the argument of Ahmadis, it was lead breaking that pillar that Jesus is not God and Jesus is not in heaven. So I realized that my father, what he told me, it was true. And I, st I said that I'm now an Ahmadi. Yes, sir. Very short, long story. Um, who would want to also share some um, experience he may have had um, joining Jamiatul Mubashirin? I'm sure you have a lot of experiences to share, so let's listen to you. Who would want to talk next? Please first mention your name and where you hail from. My name is Bashir Ahmad Tamzade and I'm from Uganda. For me, luckily, I was born in an Ahmadi family. And before my birth, as Khalifa Tulmathi the fourth, Rahmahumullah, he began the work for no scheme. So my parents gave uh, put me in the scheme. So and when I was 15 years old, they brought the forms to, to feel, to show that whether you want to, we, I want to continue to be a work for, work for no or not. So when I feel, they ask me, which, uh, 
where, where do you want to join? So I said, as my grandfather is a missionary, my father too is a missionary, so I too, I want to be a missionary. That's why I joined Jamia Tul Mubashira. That's why uh, this gentleman joined this institution. Who else would want to share his experience with us? Yes, we have someone right here in front of us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Shafiq Seru from Uganda. For the changes for in me, when I, I joined, oh, I joined Jamia Mubashirin, this, the most, oh, I can say that the major is the fault which was made by this, oh, other sex, by saying that this Jesus Christ was, or was still alive in the what in the heavens this i wanted to know whether he is still alive or his or his really dead this is why i, I came to join Jam jamat ahmadi and this is why i joined jamat mbashiram because i heard that in jamat ahmadi they they accept that or they declare the death of jesus then it came to be true when I read into the Holy Quran, and they gave me this the arguments which show that the Jesus Christ Wasalam, is dead. So, for the changes in my life, I got I get to see that I'm developing my mind. I'm widening up my minds by knowing the Holy Quran well, and then by giving up the argument which can. Make, which can suffice one whose mind to know that this is the truth, but by not saying that, because in when I was still uh, in an Ahmadi, if you bring an argument, I mean, uh, in attachment with Jesus Christ, if you ask someone that, what is the truth, please tell me the truth about him, he will just say that, please, this is God, what he say, it might be so you just accept what god says it is like this that jesus went into the heavens so you just accept that by saying this so i also wanted to know the truth this is why i joined jamata one last um, testimony we have a lot of people so many people to share their wonderful testimonies so who would speak we definitely come back to you okay <coughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Mumuni Jira. I'm from Burkina Faso. Okay, I'm, I'm very sorry. My English is not okay, but I'm going to try. Yes. As for me, the change I, I, as I have received in my life is very simple. That Ahmadi Muslim is the very Muslim of Islam. As for me, I was born in the family who was Sunni. Okay, I have, well, I I had one friend in my in my school uh, in in my school who was uh, an Ahmadis. Okay, he brought me some books of Imam Mahdi. I read it, but I was uh, due to the influence of, of uh, the mullahs of my area. I cannot. I I I, I could never. Join the, the Jamaat. But they said like that, if, if my, my friend, if you want to be a, a, an Amadis, you will get all the money. They will give you everything. But if you die, they will just cut your head and bring it to London. It's there. They, 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 they bring this head and make money. It is why they are propagating the Islam. As for me, I was very, very, very afraid. I wanted to join. This, this community, but due to, due to this agreement, I cannot. One day, I, de uh, I have decided to go to the admission, but I was very really afraid. When I, I, I arrived there, I, I, I was very, really, very really afraid to enter. But I said, if we, if we enter there, they will cut your head. Okay, I said, Inshallah, God is one, I will enter. I enter there, I... I started to discuss of one of, of the missionary, missionary who, 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 who go through this, this school. 
His name is Zila Isuf. He explained me and he gave me some books. After I read it, I see, I, through this book, I see the, the, the I, I see some, some, some true uh, how to say, through, the, through, through this book, I see uh, Ahmadis, there was a very, very, the very, very, very Islam. Inshallah, I decided to devote my life to come to this college, to get knowledge. Inshallah, if, when I will go back, I will, I will be able to preach and bring, inshallah, all, all of uh, my country, uh, all of my, my, yes, my friend in this, in, in this, in this Yamat. We are unfortunately running out of time, so we will give the platform once again to Hafiz Saab for him to share with us um, anything interesting, or let me say his final word. Well, once you have given me this opportunity, I would like to talk to this my young brothers here and then encourage them that uh, uh, to dedicate your life, to devote your life, to serve Islam, to serve Ahmadiyyad, to serve mankind is a great thing indeed, full of blessing. Never look back. Once you have entered this, go ahead, fulfill your aspiration and become very good missionaries. When you do that, Allah will take care of you. You will never lack anything in this world. You see, people, some, some people want to devote, but they are afraid that they may not get the material needs here and there that uh, other, their colleagues, their friends are getting. I assure you that whatever you need in your life to sustain yourself, your children, your family, Allah will provide. You should never be afraid of anything. A missionary is somebody whom Allah himself takes care of because you are doing the work of Allah. So when you are serving Allah, Allah also is responsible for looking after you. So don't worry at all about where your next meal will come from. And I assure you, our Khulafa, our Umara, they take good care of the missionaries. Khalifa has a lot of sympathy and love for the missionaries. Therefore, when a missionary falls into trouble somewhere, any part of the world, they are disturbed. You say, I know, because I'm in the administration. They don't want people to mess up with the missionaries. So you are in a very blessed vocation. Stick to it and use prayer as your foundation. Every time, go down in your tajud and pray for Allah, not to make you just a missionary, but a very successful missionary. That is what we should all aim at. May God bless all of you. We have some 10 or 15 minutes, so I think... Um, um, we should continue. So if you have more, you can say. So um, I was with you, um, Malvi. Um, this shouldn't be your final advice to your students, but I'm sure following the discussion, you may have something to tell us. Um, I want to say a little more about uh, discipline. How we are able to inculcate discipline into our students. In fact, the subjects that are being treated in this college are all pro-discipline. We teach them the books of the Promised Messiah, wasalam, and the choice of books that we have are all based on morality and spirituality. And uh, in them, as Masih Muhammad talks a lot about obedience and discipline. We have this uh, man Atwa Amiri Fakat Atwani, whoever uh, obeys my appointed leader, he has indeed obeyed me. The Holy Prophet says this, and the Prophet Muhammad reiterates this in his own books. And we have history of Islam that we teach these students which also talks about the sacrifices and the level of obedience of the companions of the Holy Prophet of Islam وسلم, for whose sake they are here and going out into the world to be models. They have to see role models in them. All these go in a long way to put discipline in them. And then we also teach them Islamic jurisprudence. 
it is also full of uh, side things, discipline, and so many other subjects which we teach them. And all subjects that we teach these students mold their lives to become indeed role models in the society. And a person cannot become a role model who cannot uh, follow the basic things in the society. That is to let the society, the society see you as somebody who can attract others to him. And you cannot be a lawless person and be attracted by somebody or, or be able to attract anybody to yourself. So the basis of the training in this college is pro-discipline. Yeah, Jazakallah. So it is clear that discipline runs through our major discussion um, today. L Lamboni, you are a student leader. So what have you been telling your colleagues on the essence of their stay here? As a, as a student body, we have a, a committee which is uh, SP, which is led by SP Saib that uh, we all sit together and look into the things where maybe sometimes you have problems uh, among the students where we solve it uh, easily and because of the ability or the, I can say, the perfect teachings that we are getting uh, from the, 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 the Holy Quran, the Hadith and the Sunnah, uh, that also help us to, to be molded as the Mawi has, has just said now. now. And um, if I will not say perfectly, but uh, at least to our level. And uh, I would like to just be grateful as a student of third year uh, who is going to pass out just a few months uh, to come. Uh, we, I would say we are very grateful to our Jamia administration, principal staff and the, the teaching staff all for the, 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 the work they have done for us to form us as missionaries and to be able to serve the Jamaat uh, not only uh, in Africa but in worldwide. And I say salam to all the Jamaats in the world and Togo Jamaat in particular. Jazakallah, Jazakallah. We will now turn our attention back to the students. I'm sure most of you wanted to share some of your experiences with us. So the floor is now open for you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, my name is Ishaq Upuku Muhammad. I am from Kukufu, a town in the Ashanti region, part of Ghana. Um, I attended uh, an, a seven-day Adventist junior secondary school. I started from the primary and then ended at the junior uh, high school. At that, uh, within that school, we were forced to sing. Actually, I didn't know what missionary is. I didn't know who a missionary is. So. During that time, we were being forced uh, to, to go to the church, to go to the, uh, their services, their church services. We were also forced uh, to sing. I didn't know uh, what mi uh, missionary work was. So I found myself here. I came here. There, at a point in time, I called most of my friends. I, I connected with them and then most of them were were not happy for my being here so i remember one friend of mine told me that why am i here i'm mad that is the the the, the word he used he used the word mad for me and then during that time i started crying in fact i cried for about one week without telling my problem to anybody too so during in the course of uh, that pains crying I had something in my mind. I remembered what has been said in the Holy Quran that uh, Allah has promised those who believe and good, good, uh, do good works that he will uh, make them successes. It was always in my mind. So when we, we, we went for the Jalsa to some of my friends to, in fact, they were not happy for my being here. And then most of them too were insulting. So through the remembrance of what has been said in the Holy Quran, in fact, it encouraged me and it boosted me to, to, to be here as a missionary. As-salamu alaykum. Wa alaykum salam. That is a very interesting story. 
So um, who would again want to share his experience? I'm sure all of you would want to talk, but okay, so um, let's hear from you. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Fuseni Muhammad. I come from uh, the northern region of Ghana and then uh, Kanakulai to be precise, a suburb village in this uh, Salaga constituency. Um, I, was in a, I was born in a village and then I started school in the, the primary school. And so the missionary uh, who was in charge of the Salaga Secute uh, was he do he always come to the village and then uh, I was getting in touch with him all the time. Uh, though uh, by then all the missionary was going there, uh, I wasn't a Muslim by then. So I was only going around with him and then he will go to Salaga and then leave us there. So le when uh, my school progressed from the primary school to I uh, continue my uh, junior secondary school in the Salaga district, Salaga town itself. So after completion of the junior secondary school, I got admission into the uh, TI Ahmadiyya secondary, uh, where I met uh, the headmaster of the school who took care of me in the school day. And uh, he's a person of Mr. Uh, Abubakar Ibn Yaakob. So through him, um, there is a saying that if you sit by someone who sells a uh, perfume, you definitely have uh, the scent on, on you. And so the scent I have in me now is through him. So I came here uh, through him and uh, I am praying to God. I, before I came here, I didn't know anything in the Holy Quran. And so when I came, uh, I started with difficulties. So Alhamdulillah, by now, I can also read something small in the Holy Quran. So I uh, request that I need prayers and then to, uh, Alhamdulillah, I will, inshallah, I will, I will complete. Jazakallah, we will take one last person um, since it is getting dark. So who, who would be the, the last person? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. My name is uh, Ahmed Kafando from Burkina Faso. When uh, I'm young, my parents they are not was not Muslims, and they, uh, I was in my uncle. He sent me to Madras. After uh, finishing Madras, that uh, uh, I suffered since uh, primary six. Now my uncle said that to stop this madrasa and go and do business. That one I am not this this thing I was calling in Islam too much. Now I'm run to Nigeria to increase my knowledge for Islam. And there I stayed there um, ten years. Alhamdulillah I got my for my knowledge there. When I come back, my teacher who was taking me in the madrasa, primary five. Now he became Ahmadi and he was a missionary. Now he said me that Imam Mahdi has come. I said, ah, Imam Mahdi has come? How Imam Mahdi has come? We don't know. Because every religion was waiting for Imam Mahdi We are Christian, we are Muslim, we are, we are waiting for him. So he has come, I don't hear. Why? He said he has come. Now he, he took me to the missionary for Waga. And uh, told me them, I see them, I say, Alhamdulillah, it's very good, it's most very good, they are, they are preaching, it's very good. But uh, I cannot believe that Imam Mahdi has come, or nobody will understand. He said, no, Imam Mahdi has come, now you have to come, I have to come uh, Ghana here and train as missionary. I say, no problem, because you take me from primary, so I am cannot deny it, I can for accept what you say. Now, by the grace of God, uh, he sent me here, Alhamdulillah, I um, came here in uh, 2009. We start uh, primary and uh, uh, first class. And from there, Alhamdulillah, to stay there, I'm here now. But Alhamdulillah, I mean, when I came here, I saw very, very big king. Because those stickers, Alhamdulillah, they're very good, they're treating us good. We came here, we know, don't know religion, but don't have, don't have uh, adapt, we don't have moral. You see, moral is very important. If you came, I don't know, I'm always I'm wasting that every Ahmadi should come here and train. Oh, yeah, you're a woman, oh, yeah, man. If you, go, if you don't come and train, you can know who is Mamadi. We are, we are going to tell, but we cannot tell them who is Mamadi. 
You cannot put the love Imam Mahdi on the heart only if you come to this place. Imam Mahdi has truly come from the confessions of uh, our brother. And um, Mr. Rad, unfortunately, is getting dark. And that's all in this edition of Real Talk Africa, where we've been listening to our students here. We've also been talking to our panelists. We have here the, one of the prefects in this school, Abdul Razak Lamboni. We also have Malvi Omar Farouk, Hafiz Jibril Saeed, and Malvi Hamidullah Zafar, who is the principal of this institution. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Allah, 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 Allah,